Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1400. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've got a great video here. We've got to see how to conditionally format the row in a class enrollment table with complex criteria. Now, here's our table, and we have a bunch of columns. But it's, it's these three columns we're interested in. Now, for each record in this table, we have to ask the question, is the enrollment less than 15? And does the name of the class not contain the word introduction? And is the department not equal to either one of these? Now, this one is highlighted here because, yes, that's less than 15. This does not contain introduction, and this is not one of these department names. Now, let's go over to the sheet 1400. Now, when we're doing conditional formatting, we'd like to simply highlight the entire range that's going to get the formatting. Go up to Home, Conditional Formatting, and find a built-in feature. Well, there's not a feature that will highlight the whole row based on this complex criteria. Now, anytime there is not a built-in feature, we can do it with formulas. Now, instead of highlighting the range and going up the dialog box and making the formula, I like to build a parallel range that's the same size as the table here, build the formula, copy it over down, and see if the patterns of trues and falses will work. Because the conditional formatting formula option, when we paste it into the dialog box, in memory, there'll be that formula behind the scenes giving each cell either a true or false. Now remember, we're interested in the whole row. So that means each cell in this row would have to get a true. Now we're going to start with the hurdle first. And I'm going to come down here. And I'm going to build a formula here. And I need to ask question equals, is the enrollment number? Now notice, that cell right there represents the first cell in the first row. And as I copy it to the side, every cell has to look at that enrollment number. So I have to use the F4 key and hit it one, two, three times to lock the column. So as we copy it across the columns, the F is locked. But then when we move it down to the next row, the 4 is allowed to move to 5, meaning that enrollment will look at the next enrollment. Then I have to ask the question, are you less than 15? And that has to be locked in all directions, so F4. Now I'm going to Control Enter. And this is only one test, but that's OK. We'll build the formula one step at a time, copy it over, and then copy it down. Now we can see the first row says true because, yes, that's the one condition. But this is a mistake. Because yes, that enrollment is less than 15, but the department is in this list. Not only that, but the fourth record, we see our patterns of trues. Look at that. That, of course, contains introduction. Now I'm going to do the name column next. And anytime we're searching through a larger text string, trying to find a smaller text string, we can use the search function. Now I have the same size parallel range over here. And I'm going to show you the internal part of how search works. So we go search. We need to find what text? Introduction. I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock that in all directions. Comma. Within what text? Well, there it is for the first record. But remember, that formula has got to copy to the side and always be locked on D4. But when we copy down, that has to move to D5. So we hit the F4 key three times, locking the column, but not the row. Close parentheses, Control Enter. Look at that, we're getting an error. That means it didn't find it. But when I copy down, look what search does. Search actually reports if I F2. It reports the position that it found this smaller text string within the larger text string. Now, just for illustrations, if I typed a few characters here. Now search would report 5. And we can see that's the case. So search is really looking for a position where that text string starts. Control-Z. Now we really needed to say 
true, it didn't find it. And false, it did find it. And then we need to combine it over here with that piece of the logical test. So I'm going to hit the F2 key, and I'm going to use the is error function. Now, the is error, when it sees an error, will simply report true. Close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it to the side, double click, and send it down. And now we can see our patterns of trues and falses for our second test is working. Now I'm going to copy the formula from the upper left corner, F2, highlight it in edit mode, except for the equal sign, Control C, Escape. Now I'm going to hit F2. And since we have three conditions and all of them have to be true in an AND logical test, of course I use the AND function. Logical 1, I come after that comma. Logical 2, Control V. Now the AND function, you simply put your logical test, any formula that comes out true or false, as many of them as you want, and AND reports a true only when they're all true. Close parentheses, Control Enter, copy it to the side, double click and send it down. Now that's only two of the logical tests. We still have one more piece. And we're going to do another little internal logical test. Remember, for each row, we have to check, is this item in this list over here? Is this item in this list over here? Now, there's a couple ways we could do this. We could use the OR function, or we could use the MATCH function. Now, I'm going to show you the MATCH function, because if you had many items, then the MATCH function version of how to run this, in essence, an OR logical test, is much easier to do. But remember, the, the basis is, is this item either this or this? Or you could think of it as, is this item in this list? Now, when we think of it that way, that's the perfect use for the match function. The match function looks something up. So it's going to look up the department name. And we need to lock it with the F4 key one, two, three times, column lock, but not the row. We need to look that up, comma, within this list, F4 to lock it in all directions, comma, we're doing exact match lookup, meaning I want to try and find exactly BUSN. So I put a 0, close parentheses. Control Enter and copy it over. Now what does match do? Match tells you the relative position of an item in the list. So when I copy it down, of course, for math, it reports a 2 here because 1, 2. When it looked up math, it found it as the second item in the list. So this formula is going to return one or two. And notice error number. Same thing. We're interested when it says NA, which means it did not find this in this list. So F2, we use is error tab. Come to the end, close parentheses, Control Enter. Copy it to the side, double click and send it down. F2, and we're going to copy this in edit mode. This is the third logical test, Control-C, that we will put in the AND function, F2. Now I'm very carefully going to click before the black parentheses. Notice logical 2. I type a comma and then Control-V for logical 3. Now I have logical 1. That's the hurdle test. Logical 2, that's testing whether the text introduction is in the name column. And then logical 3, that's testing whether the department is not listed over here. Control-Enter. We copy it to the side, double click, and send it down. And so now our patterns of trues and falses should only be showing up when all three conditions are met. When we come down to the seventh record right here, that pattern of trues and falses, Right here, this, oh, this is my class, Business 218, Spreadsheet Construction. But look at that. It's less than 15. That does not contain introduction, and that is not in this list. I better do something about that. Nevertheless, our formula is working. We come to the upper left-hand corner, F2, and copy the entire formula, including the equal sign, Control-C, Escape, Highlight. The entire range. Remember, we copied it from the upper left, so the active cell has to be the upper left. Home, conditional formatting, 
new rule, or we can use the keyboard Alt-H-L-N. Now, we click on Use Formula to determine which cells to format, or hit Page Down. Now we can click in Format Values where this formula is true, or simply hit Tab. Control-V to paste. Format, and then you can apply whichever format from number, font, border, and fill. I'm simply going to do yellow, click OK, click OK, and look at that. Now I see this introduction to history, history 150. That's really USA history. When I hit Enter, boom, it gets the conditional formatting. Less than 15 does not contain introduction, and this department name is not in this list. All right, that was a bit of fun with conditional formatting and our complex criteria. We'll see you next video.